Paul Hellyer, and you're listening to Unified Field Radio. The paradigm continues to shift. Great men and women all over the world have and are standing up to unite in the quest for truth. Leslie Kane, James Fox, Stephen Bassett, Rich Dolan, the late greats Colonel Wendell Stevens and Dr. John Mack, Alejandro Rojas, Bud Hopkins, and Jesse Randolph, Linda Howe and Yvonne Smith. So many voices. Who do you showcase? All of them? Perhaps. Tonight on the Unified Field, we break new ground. Never had we had such a guest of such high political and military standing. A man of integrity and wisdom on a continuing journey. A quest for truth, justice, and peace. A true Canadian hero and patriot. Tonight, the former Minister of National Defense, the Honorable Mr. Paul Hellier, is here with us to speak about his 2005 statements that UFOs are real, ETs are making contact, and our technology is emulating theirs. We also talk about his new book, Light at the End of the Tunnel, and its important implications. But the show doesn't stop there, my friends. We've got the exopolitical pulse with all kinds of great stories from around the world, SciTech news, perhaps, and a ton of great music. Don't go anywhere. This is Atlantic Canada's only paranormal radio broadcast, and a new reality awaits right here on CKDU 88.1 FM. It's Saturday night. Welcome back. Don't touch that dial. An alternate reality awaits. If you're looking for a cozy, friendly place to get your coffee close to the Dow campus, why not try Cobra Coffee? We make everything you're looking for. Lattes, cappuccinos, mochaccinos, hot chocolate, sandwiches, and sweets. We also offer free Wi-Fi, so you can take your time. Cobra Coffee is conveniently located on the corner of Cobra Road and Henry Street. Check out our daily coffee special. For more information, stop in or visit CobraCoffee.com. I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm ready to go. Check out The Coast every week for new music reviews, arts reviews, and movie reviews. And CKDU's weekly top 10 new CDs. Pick up The Coast at various locations around the city or check it out on the web at thecoast.ca. Okay. Three, two, one. We are the poets of Creative Spirit East. And we're coming to you from the studios of CKDU 88.1 FM in Helena. Entering the unified field. Do not touch your dial. You are now entering the unified field. To another exciting edition, it's episode Snake Eyes of the Unified Field, the Auspicious Eleven. Isn't that awesome? And uh, what a great episode it is, and very auspicious indeed, as the Honorable Paul Hellier is with us here on the Unified Field. It's a fantastic interview we, we shared a little while back. It was really, really nice to have him. He was a really nice gentleman, and uh, he had a lot of interesting insight 
a lot of wisdom um, and a lot of information that he had gathered from people he had known directly in the field of military uh, in the military environment and, and, and otherwise. He's been on so many radio programs and, and media broadcasts since his statements in 2005, and it, it honors us out here in Atlantic Canada to have our Canadian former Minister of National Defense, the great unifier of our military. You know, most people said it couldn't be done, but he did it here in Canada and uh, set precedent for the world. It's too bad they couldn't learn a little bit more from this gentleman. It's a great interview. Stick around. There is so much going on here today on the show. It's great. Oh, where do we begin? Lots of stuff to talk about, of course. You know, I've been trying to figure out, uh, you know, I've been thinking lately, pondering the idea of maybe changing the format of the show. You know, maybe doing the, the, uh, the exopolitical paranormal news and all that stuff up front and then save the best for last. But I don't know, depending on who's listening, the news could be the best. The interview might not be for you guys out there. For others, the interview's the best and vice versa. So, I don't know. I've been pondering the idea of maybe doing all the news and information and and things like that up front and then doing the interview last. Not sure. I mean, we've already done 10 episodes in in the format that we have it. Interview first and then news later, which is kind of nice, I think. Um, Send me your ideas. Uh, write to me at uh, unifiedfieldradio at gmail.com and tell me what you think I should do about the format. I think the format's fine. But you never know. You might have some insight for me. We have lots of stuff to talk about. Like I said, you know, we're going to talk about the moon and Mars, Titan, Jupiter's moon. Of course, the passing of Wendell Stevens and Zachariah Sitchin, of course. Wendell Stevens, Colonel Wendell Stevens, of course, has been researching all kinds of stuff in the ufological field for decades, uh, bringing to light all kinds of interesting information. He he spent a lot of focus on the Billy Meyer case, of course. Um, And Zechariah Sitchin has departed, the author of The Twelfth Planet, and a whole series of books based on ancient Sumer and how the Sumerians, well, his interpretation of Sumerian ancient cuneiform tablets, suggests that we were seeded, we were genetically manipulated by the Anunnaki of Nibiru, uh, something like 150, or what is it, 200,000 years ago, or something to that effect. And we're the byproducts of alien DNA, created as a slave race, to do the toil in the mines, to harvest the gold, to heal the atmosphere of the Anunnaki. So Mr. Zechariah Sitchin, you know, who met, met all kinds of famous people and had traveled all over the world. I uh, just saw a little article by Antonio Huneus from Open Minds that had him sitting with Shirley MacLaine even. So we'll make a quick mention of that again later. Of course, uh, the new book out now, uh, Richard Dolan and Bryce Sable, AD, After Disclosure. It's been out for a little while now, but I thought I'd make another mention of that. Leslie's Kane still building spe- speed on her book, UFOs. Governments, generals, and military officials go on the record. Uh, what do we got? We got new movies coming out. I just saw an ad the other day for a movie called Monsters, which is, I think, basically the story of a group of aliens invading Earth. Uh, and it's very apocalyptic. And I mentioned before in the last episode of the amount of uh, movies coming out in the ufological field, in the exopolitical field. And folks... Most of them are apocalyptic, very malevolent. There's a lot of fear being poured into it. I, and I'm telling you, there's about seven films coming out. They're all coming out on the horizon between now and 2011 and 2012 about alien invasion. Almost all of them. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, of course, this is going to be a really great couple months for the unified field. Here we have Paul Hellier. We had a whole echelon of 10 other great high-caliber guests before Paul here. But upcoming tomorrow, I'm doing an interview with Michael Schratt of Open Minds. Of course, he's an aeronautical uh, historian and spoke directly to Dr. Dan Burrish, quote-unquote Dr. Dan Burrish, um, who apparently worked at Area S4 with an extraterrestrial named J-Rod. There's some documents called Project Aquarius that you can get from Open Minds if you want to check that out, of, of Dan Burrish's interaction with the extraterrestrial named J-Rod and other uh, extraterrestrial involvements with Earth, the layout of the S4 environment in Groom Lake, of course. So Michael Schratt will be chatting with us tomorrow. We're pretty excited about that. We want to talk a lot about other things, too, about black projects and new 
technologies being developed in the R&D departments of the military, of course, decades ahead of us, uh, reducing drag. You know, if they haven't gotten anti-gravity devices by now, they will. Uh, so it's going to be cool talking to Michael Stratt. And of course, a week from now, too, we're talking to... Actually, Monday night, I'll talk first about this guy, Clary Croft. Clary Croft. He wrote a book about witches, the history of witchcraft and witches here in the Atlantic region, and how they were um, feared and revered all over the area as some of the most powerful witches uh, around. And these date all the way back to 1634. Pretty much right after Port Royal there in 1604 with Cabot and Champlain and all those guys landing at Port Royal. So it's going to be really cool to talk to Clary Croft because I had no idea the deep, rich history of witchcraft going on in the area. After So the following week after Clary Croft, I've got... This is a great weekend. I've got from Open Minds Magazine and Open Minds TV, the world-renowned and illustrious, busy, ufological... Uh, uh, young legend in my eyes because he's he's just young. He's probably just a couple years older than me, but he's making waves all over the earth. He's the uh, former spokesman for MUFON International, I believe. Is it MUFON International or just MUFON in general? I'm not sure. But he's been to conferences, lectures, he's put out movies, radio programs. He was a correspondent on UFONOT Radio uh, uh, with Jesse Randolph. He, of course, he's got his own radio program, Open Minds. Radio, Mr. Alejandro Rojas, as he says. Super excited to talk to him. He's a big hero of mine. He's a mover and shaker. Part of Jesse Randolph's new guard. Well, he's not really, but that's what Jesse Randolph calls him because he's a mover. He's a shaker. He's making things happening, you know? So it's super exciting to talk to him and for him to take the time out to talk to me, Mr. Justin Antonio Brown. Very flattered. Um, and then after that, Yvonne Smith is going to be on the show. She is a, uh, a hypnotherapist who has a background in post-traumatic stress disorder and helping people with that. And she accidentally uh, ended up going to a lecture by Bud Hopkins, a legendary Bud Hopkins, who's been dealing with the abduction phenomena forever. And uh, he took her on as her mentor, and she's continuing, continuing the work where he left off. She's got some interesting insight about the alien hybrid program and the abduction phenomenon in general. So huge, unified field just does not stop. We are never going to stop. We're going to keep on going, searching for truth. Only the highest echelon of guests are on this program, and uh, we welcome you as you welcome me and all of our guests out into the waves, out into the area. I have to tell you guys that I ate more noodles today. I don't know. And I'm still drinking that pumpkin spice coffee. Still. I can't get rid of it. It just never ends. Also, I was Mario for Halloween, which was awesome. My son and I and my girlfriend all dressed up as Peach, Mario, and Toad. It was awesome. And I had the long stash ends that I twisted up with honey, and it looked fantastic. Hope you all had a, f a safe and happy Halloween, of course. Uh, but I'll tell you, the next morning I woke up, Halloween's October 31st, the next day is November 1st. Movember. Do I have to say it twice? Movember. Love it. I love Movember. This is the first time I've actually had a thick mustache or a mustache at all for Movember, which of course I'm going to wear for the whole month. For all of you people who are asleep in the world, November is the month that we all, us men, wear our mustaches. And women, if you want to buy some fake ones and wear them too, please do. It's to raise awareness for uh, cancer for men and the prostate generally, right? Prostate cancer. So it's for a good cause. And I have to tell you, I look absolutely ridiculous. I had no idea how diminutive my features were until I got rid of my beard Good Lord. But you know what? Every day that goes by, I think I like the mustache a little bit more. I ran into a friend the other day in the uh, grocery store. 